Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Prestonsburg officials are working to find a solution to an ongoing problem with one of the city's most beloved attractions. And we take you to Harlan County where crews spent their day salting the roads and explained how they choose when to take action. Plus, a Knott County school is out for the fourth day in a row. Not the snow or flooding, but yet another round of illness. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is 4.59 on February 21st. I'm Madison Pergram and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning on this Friday. We've made it to that last day of the work week. Well, let's go to Brandon Robinson. Brandon, we've had a pretty good week weather-wise this week. For the most part, back and forth at times and it is cold this morning. Frigid actually. Let's take a look across the region starting with the WIMT studio camera and you'll see outside of the studios quiet this morning. The clouds are clearing out and that makes it chilly. 19 right now. Prestonsburg Pikeville, Williamsburg, and Somerset, 18, Irvin and Moorhead, 20s across the rest of the region, the warmest spot in the region, 26 right now in Middlesbrough. You factor in how cold it is this morning from this time yesterday. Remember, it was starting to snow, or getting ready to snow at this point yesterday, and it's still 10 to 15 to 16 degrees colder than it was this time yesterday. So maybe just a touch of frost on the windshields this morning. Probably not a lot because some of the skies didn't clear out fast enough, but just give yourself time in case it did uh, develop a little bit early this morning. Max warming needed on the coffee meter. And you're out the door forecast. No clouds after we get into the later morning hours. And we'll see sunshine all day and all weekend. Today, though, on the chillier side. We'll have the extended forecast coming up here in a little bit. Madison. Thank you, Brandon. Well, yesterday, crews spent their day salting roads in Harlan as snow steadily came down. Now, crews with the Harlan County Road Department salted roadways as snow started to come down Thursday morning. They say they wanted to get out as early as possible yesterday because salt works best when the temperatures are between 20 and 30 degrees. This way, they could get ahead of the bulk of the snow when temperatures drop into the teens. So that way tomorrow, if it does come tonight, tomorrow we have a step ahead of it with getting it removed from the roadways. Now to keep an eye on the snowfall, download our WYMT weather app in the App Store. And Prestonsburg officials are working to find a solution to an ongoing problem with one of the most city's beloved attractions. Archer Park is no stranger to floodwaters and crews are working to clean the park again for the second time in less than two months. One of the buildings on site has been damaged beyond repair and Mayor Les Stapleton says all the flooding has had a negative impact on tourism. He says something has to be done to move the city forward. 42,000 cars with two to three, five, six, eight people in these cars to see our Christmas lights. And you know, we had to shut down twice this year, four times last year. And we had to take them down, let the water come up, recede, clean, and then put them back up. So we're just trying to find some relief. Stapleton says he hopes to bring state and local leaders to the table to move forward with plans to reroute the water flow that cuts through the park. And last Thursday, a quiet community in Pike County was startled by sounds of a fiery train derailment. This is footage from that day. A mudslide from recent rains was blamed for the derailment and drafting. Local rescue crews hurried to reach the two engineers by boat, but made it out safely. The train was carrying ethanol, and this is a photo from yesterday morning. CSX removed all of the contaminated soil, cleared the slide area, and is readying the area for track repair. This ends the emergency phase, and the company is still continuing long-term monitoring of the site, including water samples. And no school across eastern Kentucky seems to be the trend as illness, flooding, and snow cycle through the region. Illness has caused Knott County schools to close the past three days and again today. All classrooms are being sanitized as well as school buses. Knott County Superintendent Kim King says this precaution is to give the students time to get better and ease the minds of parents. Keep them home to get better because they don't want them to miss school. And I don't want to have to call off school for flu or weather or anything else. But at this time, we didn't have another option. I didn't feel like to, um, to get rid of this. Now, King says that as of now, the plan is to resume school on Monday.
And Thursday was competition day at the Kentucky School for the Blind in Louisville. Students are competing in the Kentucky Regional Braille Challenge. More than three dozen students from first to twelfth grade compete in four categories. Speed and accuracy, proofreading, reading comprehension, and interpret interpreting charts and graphs. This is the tenth year for the challenge and before that students went to other states to compete. Before, we would load all of our Kentucky students on a bus and take them to Tennessee to compete. So now we get to do it right here. Top scorers will be invited to Los Angeles this summer for the National Braille Challenge. And yesterday was Cancer Action Day at the state capitol. Cancer patients, survivors, and volunteers gathered in Frankfurt to demand action from lawmakers. Advocates estimate that more than 26,000 Kentuckians will be diagnosed with cancer this year. Nearly half will die from the disease. Members from the American Cancer Society lined the hallway between the annex and the capitol building with the stories of survivors. We need to do everything we can to reduce the mortality rate because it's still high in Kentucky and lawmakers can help that. Now, advocates asked to increase funding for research and screening programs. They also asked that the government restore funding to the state's tobacco sensation prevention program in an attempt to keep children from becoming addicted. And in Greenup County, officials announced earlier this week that all hospital-based patient care at our a Lady Bellefontaine Hospital will end in April. According to a release from the company that owns the hospital, that care includes emergency services and acute care at the hospital. Those services will end April 30th. The company says EMS will be notified that no patients will be accepted after that date. The company originally announced that the closure would take place in September of this year. Well, thank you for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Moorhead State University welcomed a very special guest to campus yesterday. We'll have the details just ahead. It's a frigid morning, but I think you're going to like the forecast overall for the next couple of days. I'll have it for you in about three minutes.